So this is what it all comes down to. Really, it always came down to regulation and what the SEC was going to do. And I'm just going to here to tell you that this is the time that I've been waiting for. And what I'm talking about specifically is the SEC cracking down. And we know that uh, they came to crack in. They said, hey, no more of that funny business with uh, all your staking. And then uh, Kraken had to pay $3 million. And just recently, I think it was yesterday, uh, SEC uh, is suing Tron founder Justin Sun and a couple of different influencers like uh, Lindsay Lohan and Jake Paul and things like that. And then, of course, ye yesterday, last night, this is what it comes down to. Uh, Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, says, look, we just received a Wells notice from the SEC. And when you get a Wells notice, what that really means is that they're going to sue you. That's exactly what's coming to Coinbase. And I'll get into the why and all that stuff. But I said this weeks ago. We have to sue the SEC. Grayscale is doing it. Because they said, look, if you're not going to allow us to get a Bitcoin ETF, we're going to take you to court and we're going to figure out why you allowed, not did not allow spot Bitcoin ETF, but a futures ETF. It makes no sense to us. And right now it looks like they're you know, doing pretty well against the SEC. But I've always said, like, when you have a bully, there's only one way to treat a bully. And that's to stand up to the bully. And really it comes down to the obstacle is going to be the way. There's only one way through this. And it goes through the SEC and we have to beat them. That's really what it comes down to. And this is what Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, said. He said, look, he goes, this is the Wells notice. Uh, it usually precedes an enforcement action. He states, two years ago, the SEC reviewed our business in detail and approved Coinbase to go public. It is a publicly traded company. And there is some information we're going to go over in just a little bit, which is going to tell us which way you know, we should support uh, Coinbase. Our S1 clearly explained our asset listing process and includes 57 references to staking. Coinbase runs a rigorous as asset review process, rejects more than 90% of assets. We are right in the law, confident in the facts, and welcome the opportunity for Coinbase and by extension, the crypto community to go before a court. Going forward, the legal process will provide an open and public forum before an unbiased body where we'll be able to make clear for all to see that the SEC has not been fair, reasonable, or demonstrated a seriousness of purpose when it comes to engagement. And when I read that, I'm like, finally, you know, we'll get this out of the way because we have to do this. We know we have to do this. We knew that all roads led to this. And I put out a tweet last night. I go, this is great. And I said, I'm going to talk about this in tomorrow's non financial advice live show with uh, Guy and Ben. I said, but we got to support Coinbase. Uh, this legal process is going to be long. It's going to be years. Look at what's happening with Ripple. And I said, the way I'm going to think about doing this is investing into the stock of Coinbase. And I whipped open my phone and I said, okay, Robinhood, this is what we're going to do, $100 every day. That'll be enough to support them and we can kind of, you know, kind of rally around what is Coinbase. And the memories I was getting about this. And I, I talked about this in the tweet. I said, you know, this is uh, just like GameStop. I mean, if GameStop can do this where they can, you know, their investors, they get tired of the shenanigans that are going on with the, the uh, behind the scenes action and uh, the people that are shorting it, they rallied around GameStop and they stopped them. They put them in, the, in their place. I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that same thing. However, in this morning's show, Guy and Ben, I talked about that exact same thing. And Ben had a great point. He said, you can do that. He goes, but just be aware that Coinbase is selling their stocks right now. I said, oh, I said, that's a, that's a good point. Let's take a look at how much they actually are selling. Because if I'm selling and they're, if, or if I'm buying and I tell other people to buy and then all the upper management is selling, what's the point of that? So reach out to some people and they said, just take a look at Finviz because Coinbase is a publicly traded company. All of their sales will be recorded. So I'm going to link this website, finviz.com. And you just, you know, up here where it says search the ticker or company or profile, you just put in coin and uh, that'll be Coinbase. And you can just take a look at all this, these data points. But down here, if you scroll down, you can see who's selling and who's not. So Paul Gruel, who also tweeted about this, uh, things that are happening with the SEC, uh, just yesterday, uh, sold about $64,000 worth of stock. And then, of course, you see the big ones, Brian Armstrong, Brian Armstrong, blah, 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 Jennifer Jones, the uh, chief accounting officer, they've just been selling.
Now, to be fair, there have been some buys here, but it hasn't been substantial buys. Uh, but that's uh, what you can see here in the green area. But you see a lot of red. And I'm not faulting them for that at all. This is a free market. They're free to do whatever they want to. And if we really drill down, uh, of course, we can see here in the, on the first page, but if we just drill down to like, say, Brian Armstrong, all transactions, uh, he sold a lot. So, I mean, starting on April 14th, uh, you can see that uh, the value that he sold of, uh, of his shares, 749, almost 750,000, was 291 million, 827,966. You can see right there. So for me, I think to myself, it is a good rallying call to do those things, and it's great to support the community, but sometimes you have to be careful about what you're supporting. If they are selling, I'm not saying they're going to dump everything right now. It just makes me think twice about it. So then I start to my, thought to myself, well, how can I support this? Well, there's a couple of ways that I can do this and we can do this. One of those ways is to always give updates about the story that is unfolding, how things are going. But the, the bigger one, I think, would be just to use Coinbase itself. And I thought to myself, well, how can we do that? How can we, what are the best ways? So if you take a look here, how does Coinbase generate revenue? Because this is going to be a multi-year lawsuit. Funds are going to be needed. And someone did point out that, you know, uh, BlackRock is in some way uh, mingling with, with Coinbase, what they're doing. But regardless, in the final quarter of 2022, this is how Coinbase generated their revenue. It was 605 million, 605 million in total revenue. 322 million came from transaction revenue. That's from us. That's from the retail buyer buying crypto. And 282 million were subscriptions and services. So what are subscriptions? It's this, it's Coinbase One, and I already have this. So I think we're doing our part already. And I'm just gonna ask you, I mean, you can do whatever you wanna do. I can't give you financial advice. If you want to buy stock and those things, just, just realize that the normal flow or function of businesses are sometimes to buy and sometimes to sell. And you could be buying and it could go up, but uh, there is a chance that they sell and you know you are picking up those bags. However, if you have a service like Coinbase One, it's a subscription. It gives members access to zero, zero dollar trading fees. You get dedicated 24 seven phone support, 1 million account protection, and they pre-fill a form for taxes, which is great. And just so you know, there's a fee-free trading volume limit and for me, it's $10,000 per month. I don't know what it is for you, but that's what it should be for most people out there. And it costs $29 per month, or it's, uh, it's $19 a month if you pay for a year in advance. So that's how I see us supporting these people. And I got to tell you, if the other exchanges, the Celsius and the Voyagers would have just, you know, just stuck to their basic model and not went crazy for yield, they probably would have still been around. Well, I don't know about Celsius, but Voyager definitely. But they got a little greedy, loaned out three hours capital. So when I see of things that we can do, this works for me. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And just to finish off, is some other big news, which is uh, Do Kwan reportedly got arrested. So <laughs> there is justice out there in the world. And he was arrested in uh, Montenegro. Where is that? Uh, you're looking at here's Italy, Croatia, Slovenia, uh, right by Serbia and Kosovo. So he was picked up there. It looks like there is an extradition process. So we'll be covering that story as it unfolds. And that is, uh, I think, good news for a lot of people that uh, lost a lot of funds. And we'll see him face justice for that. And then lastly, I just want to talk real quick about Bitcoin in the process. And I put out a tweet. And I said, you know, not all things are, are doom and gloom. I mean, look. Yes, the SEC is out there. Yes, there have been some collapses of the tr of the uh, crypto market, but also in the banking market. But just remember, I said Bitcoin, and everybody talked about this. That was it was only went up in the quantitative easing time. There was never massive rate hikes, recessions, and wars and things like that. So it'll never make it in those conditions. And you can see that this was this morning. It was twenty seven five. And someone said, hey, you know, you should actually make it very fair. You should show it from the beginning of quantitative tightening. I said, okay, to be fair, quantitative tightening, when the Fed starts to unload his balance sheet, uh, began on Jan June 1st, 2022. And the price then, 
was 29,833. And I said, to be fair, remember, uh, we had major failures. Celsius positive draws on June 12th, Voyager on July 5th, FTX and BlockFi on November 10th. And just yesterday, we were at 28,912. So in all honesty, I think Bitcoin's doing just fine. And actually, if you take a look right now, Bitcoin's back up to 28,633. And that's a nice green candle. So look, I know there's a lot of uh, volatility going on in the market, but I think we're in the right place at the right time. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up. I highly recommend if you could uh, go over there to uh, Coin Bureau Clips and take a look at uh, the uh, talk, talking and discussion that we had. Uh, me, Ben, and Guy from here was a pretty good one, uh, roughly about an hour. I'll link that in the description. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.